Then it's code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the song. Welcome back to my State of Video series. We've been looking at regression models. And uh, currently we're looking, this video and a couple of others are looking at post-estimation commands. The state of commands you can use to evaluate your models after you've run them. So, uh, as usual, I'm running the general social survey. I've restricted my sample to a subset of data. I'm looking, uh, in this set of examples, I'm really only going to use the variable for occupational prestige in year 2010. And, uh, I, and the highest academic degree earned, or the degree variable. Let's go ahead and run our first model. I'm going to regress prestige 80 on degree. Notice that I'm using factor notation so that the degree variable will be conceived as a set of dummy variables and will exclude the lowest education group. And then I'm going to replay the command. I'm going to just issue the regress command without any um, uh, variables. So Stata will look to memory to see if there's an estimated model already available, which there will be. And then I'm going to use the COEF legend, the coefficient legend command, to show you what Stata thinks these uh, coefficients are called. So I'm going to skip, uh, you see the ANOVA table at the top. Let's skip down a little bit. So when we run our regression command, we get our regression coefficients, our beta hat um, sub 0 for the constant and beta hat sub 1 for all the dummy variables. When I replay that regression command, down below I get the uh, regression coefficients, but I also get the legend, which tells me that these variables, in terms of stata, are referred to as 1 dot degree, 2 dot degree, and so forth. Um, there's actually a 0 dot degree, that's my reference or base group. If you want more information on how to use factor variables in your regression models, you can see my first video on regression, and that will explain this convention to you. But we need these names so that we can test specific things um, in our model. So the first command that we're going to use is the test command. The test command is, is sort of my go-to command, although I am enjoying test parm, which is another command I'll show you in a minute. The test command allows you to specify specific variables, combinations of variables, or even uh, equations, and, and do a test of significance. For example, down here on line 8, you notice I've got the command test followed by all of my dummy variables, 1 dot degree, 2 dot degree, 3 dot degree, and 4 dot degree. This will produce an F test, or an overall model test, of the addition of the variable degree set up as dummy variables to my model, whether my model contains other variables or not. Obviously this example I'm just looking at a, a simple one-way ANOVA because I only have the dummy variables, but I could have a much more complicated model. Let's go ahead and test those effects. So you can see that my F statistic is 200. Now at the top of the output here, where I replayed my regression command, I'm going to have to roll up the screen just a little bit. You can see that my F test up there is 200. These are identical tests. So when I have a reduced model that has um, no variables in it, just my dependent variable, and then I add this dependent, um, this independent variable for academic degree, my uh, model F test, my overall F test from my regression will equal this particular test. That won't be true if you have a multiple regression model where you have um, other covariates and control variables and other explanatory variables. So this is a nice, quick, easy way to test all of your dummy variables, or really any variables. Now, I said I mentioned the test parm post-estimation command before, and I'm using it here. The biggest difference uh, between line 8 and line 9, that in line 9, when I'm using test parm, I can specify variable lists. So instead of having to type 1 dot degree, 2 dot degree, and so forth, I can just say I, and then in parentheses use a, a number list in a typical state of fashion, which is 1 slash 4, so that'll be my 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then dot degree. I should get the same output here, and I do. I get my F test of approximately 200. Now, the power of the test command, um, you know, 
becomes evident when you want to test other specific things. For example, I'm going to come down here on line 11 and just issue the summarize command so I can get the average occupational prestige, which we see is about uh, approximately 43. In line 12, I'm going to make a specific test that group 2 of occupational degree is equal to the grand mean. This will do a difference of means test comparing the overall average for group 2 to the grand mean. And we can see that that difference is statistically significant. I can also compare, uh, you know that when you use um, indicator variables or dummy variables, all of your individual t-tests and your regression output are making comparisons to your base or reference group, the group that's omitted, the omitted category. But we can test any comparison we'd like. For example, in the next line, line 12, I'm going to test for the difference in average um, occupational prestige comparing people in group 2 for degree with group 3 for degree. Now if you forget what these groups are, you can always come out and issue a tabulate command, which I'll do here. And I can see that <clears throat> my group 0 is less than high school, group 1 is high school, group 2 is junior college, group 3 is bachelor. So this is going to compare the coefficients for bachelor degree and junior college degree. Let's go ahead and run that model. We can see that there is a statistically significant difference in occupational prestige between these two groups, even though neither of these groups was the omitted category. I said earlier that um, we could test different kinds of equations. So in line 14, you can see that I'm, I might have a theoretical reason to believe that the difference between my junior college and high school, um, uh, and sorry, my junior college and college degree should be 110%. So I'm taking that the coefficient for the junior college degree and multiplying it by 1.1. That is increasing it by 110%. If we were to see a 10% increase in occupational prestige, I'm testing that difference against the uh, college degree occupational prestige. And we can see here that we would still reject the null hypothesis that even if that coefficient were to increase by 10%, um, there would still be a statistically significant difference between these two um, coefficients. I hope you found that helpful. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. And it's code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? Whoop. Program it right. Nothing else.